And for further analysis, let's now turn to Jeremy Sultan in Jerusalem. He's a Knesset insider and political analyst. Sir, thank you so much for your time today. How surprised at all of this are you by the decision to sort of dial back on the timing of this overhaul, at least temporarily? Yeah, well, first of all, I must say that I'm very much um, surprised by both the intensity as well as, uh, I would say, the determination and dedication of the protesters. We're talking about a protest movement that's been going on now for close to three months strong. And, you know, if you look at just the protests today, being able to be out there for 12 hours, that is quite a long time. Now, of course, when you're looking at the decision by the prime minister to go ahead and postpone the legislation, I, I think that's something that is a little bit at this point less surprising. I think it would have been, frankly, more surprising had he decided to move forward. And to that point, how exasper exasperated are members of his own government with the idea of implementing this judicial reform? New York's consul general just quit over the defense minister sacking. Yeah, I mean, right now, if you're looking within the coalition government, you see different voices. Of course, there was the defense minister who was uh, uh, sacked uh, for giving his opposition to uh, trying to move forward with the legislation at this point. We know that there are people on the other side that are very much upset and have criticized the prime minister for his decision to freeze the current uh, legislation in order to give a chance for dialogue with the other side. So we're definitely seeing both voices right now within the coalition itself. And then how is the opposition responding to this melee to their advantage? Well, you know, the opposition, sort of like the coalition, is also split down the middle. You have uh, had responses from both uh, opposition leader Lapid as well as the leader of one of the other opposition parties, Benny Gantz, who he himself was a former defense minister. And both of them have said that they are willing to go and see some sort of dialogue, of course, as long as it's coordinated by President Herzog, who's viewed upon as a neutral figure. That being said, we saw other leaders of the opposition, such as the Labour Party leader, Mirav Mecha'eli, who is not going ahead and uh, moving forward with the attempts by the uh, prime minister to try to uh, have some sort of discourse or dialogue with the opposition and saying straight out the mission of the protest is to topple the government, and that is what she intends to do. And, sir, this is a real inflection point. Netanyahu has dealt with so many colossal ups and downs in recent years. And does he survive this? And if so, how? Well, you know, the good news for him is that within the coalition itself, we have a situation where, uh, you know, it's 64 members out of 120 that that really it's it's very safe to say that none of the other members within the 64, meaning the other 63, are alternatives to Netanyahu in terms of the members that we have right now in this Knesset. Uh, that being said, obviously, if we're looking at the polls right now, Netanyahu and the coalition government right now is taking a very big hit. It doesn't matter which poll you're looking at, who's conducting it, which channel it's being broadcast on. The support that I said before of 64 seats is down to 52 or 53 in latest polls coming out over the last 24 hours. So when you have those type of poll numbers, it also makes, I think, a lot of the coalition partners under Netanyahu's government understand that perhaps it does make sense to give dialogue a chance. We'll, of course, see what happens. Yeah, still a very volatile situation. Okay, we will leave it there. Jeremy Sultan, thank you so much for your time.